How you doing guys? I'm Sean. Welcome to Rambles with my camera. Guys, today's Ramble, today's video. Uh, several of you guys, subscribers there, have asked me to uh, give you a bit of a rundown on how I tweak my photographs for these films and also for Flickr and website and Facebook, etc. So this is what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to be concentrating on the colour here today. I'm going to do a separate video on black and white. I'm not too sure when I'm going to get that uploaded or when you're actually watching this. But when I have it done, if you check up on the right hand side of the screen, uh, the video will pop out there. Uh, the video link will pop out uh, when it's ready. But watch out for that. Um, I'm actually, if you're not also familiar with the previous video, I talked about um, Google Nix collection. It's free and it's downloadable. I've been learning that there for the past couple of days and I'm loving it. I'm not going to use it in this here. I'm just going to stick to what I know 100%. And uh, I'll do a future video on it. But I think the next collection is absolutely amazing. First impressions. If you're not familiar with it, as I say, it's free. Check that link out up above. So here we go, guys. I'm going to be doing it this way here. And I say, January, there's probably a thousand other ways that you could actually be doing it. Um, I'm going to be just tweaking it the way I normally do. Now, obviously, I've photographed the largest screen here. I spotted this girl down in Temple Bar in Dublin. And I just loved her style. I just loved the way the light was illuminating her face there. And it was just, you can clearly see it's very, very bright day. Although she was under a, like a like a tarpaulin uh, stall covering. It's giving her that bit of a shade. But I'm loving the light in here. And it's completely raw. It was shot with an Icon D3300 uh, with a kit lens, 18 to 55 millimeter lens. And I say it was shot in manual mode. Now this is raw out of the camera, so it needs tweaking. And I just like the way she was walking past all these uh, badges and she's at a stall, as I say. And the next photograph here, she stopped and she picked up this book. And I, I just love the photograph because basically, as you can see, murder is easy. Uh, cool nails, by the way, but murder is easy. And I just think it's funny because she's also smirking, she's smiling. Now, I don't know what's going through her mind or what she's reading in the back of that book. But basically, I just think that photograph makes it. So this is one I'm going to be tweaking. Now, I'm just going to show you, if you're not familiar, I'm going to use Lightroom 5. If you're not familiar, <coughs> excuse me, if you're not familiar with Lightroom 5 um, or Lightroom, um, Lightroom is obviously, it is what it is. It's actually the opposite of a dark room where you'd have to have all them nasty chemicals um, and, and being based inside of somebody's home or some location and you're, you're trapped in a room. The Lightroom is, is you're out in the open. I'm sitting here now looking out, beautiful sunny day, wee birds flying about the place. And this is a fantastic thing about Lightroom. You've brought your darkroom out into the light. And that's what we're going to be doing. Now, it's packed with presets. And you can also download presets from various locations. And you also make your own presets if you want. Presets are like filters here. And like by clicking on one of them, let's say for toxic, I click on uh, you know, the blue filter here. It automatically turns that photograph into the black and white. And it, depending on... The, you know the filter that you're going to be putting it's going to be changing and there's actually uh, black and white high contrast so get you a head start now that in itself is workable even as is without even being tweaked so it's going to save you a lot of time if you were converting but as i say i'm going to touch more on that in the black and white photograph so i'm going to reset this back again now what i could also do is is i've got my own um you know, when you're doing like 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 photographs in a go, you want to be done as quickly as possible. So what you want to do is you want to have your own presets. And like this one here, if I wanted to, I could click this to black and white. This is one I've created. And once again, this is, works well, I think. Yeah, and that'll actually, so you can use it in some color, average and lighting. You know, and all of them are we can keep, you know, you keep tweaking them on top of it. Let's see, just check it outdoor and let's just see. Two is a wee bit too bright. Let's see this one. Okay. Not too bad there. Okay, so basically there's like a template there. So it would give me the basis if I wanted to tweak that. And um, what you could do is you can actually, as you can see, it's slightly dark. So I could bring this on up into. Let me see what I've got on the go here. Could bring the exposure up a wee bit more. And that's working as is. I could grab the run in here made a wee bit darker and technically that's nearly ready that's just good to go and that's because i used a preset now i don't want to do that because that's too easy i'm going to bring you straight down till the bare bones here and let you see that me building this up so i hit reset now this is back to exactly as it was um coming from the raw 
okay, out of the camera. Now this is what I'd be doing. So you go over here to the right hand side. This is where you start to change, you know, the, the contrast and the lighting and all the things that makes a photograph wonderful. Well, hopefully wonderful. Now you've got the exposure there. I don't touch it yet. I don't touch the contrast yet, and I may not. The highlights, I do this with every single photograph. I drop the highlights straight down, and I bring the shadows straight up. Now I can clearly see that the shadows is lacking there, but I don't touch it at this stage. I just bring a highlight straight down, shadow straight up. This is my routine. I go until the whites. I hold the Alt key in as I'm going. I think it might be the Option key in the... Uh, sorry about that flickering there. It doesn't usually flicker. I think it's because I'm, I'm recording it as I'm doing it. But I hold the Alt key. I'm using a PC here. And I'm dragging the band up here, the whites. Now, basically what that's doing is the highlights is getting up. Now, you can clearly see... Just to show you exactly what's happening. Say for Toxic is her hip there. That's a highlight there, obviously. Now you can clearly see it's gone white. And the reason that's gone white is because I've given it too much to the right hand side. In other words, I'm bleaching everything out. It's clipping it, they call it. Going to get to, if I drop it right down, and there's too little. Because you need to have that balance. You want to have weights. But obviously you don't want to have too much weight because it's going to look like that. And when it comes to you obviously showing it on the computer or printing it, you want some detail. So this is what you're wanting to do. So I hold the Alt key in, and that blanks the screen off, and then I start dragging the, the thing up. Sorry about that flicker, guys. Hope it's not affecting any of your eyes, by the way. It's almost ghost-like because it's a gothic girl, you know? Only some weird music coming in now. Now, obviously, I'm going to bring this up. Now, see when it gets to that stage there, I stop. I'll just show you what that's like on to there. So it's very light, yeah? Because I don't want I want to have some detail retained in there, but in the same breath I want to hang. I'm going to do the same with the blacks. I'll probably do there. Now the next thing I'm going to do is, as I've mentioned before, there you can clearly see that it's lacking. It's very flat. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to pull the shadows. Now although I pull them right up to 100%, I'm going to reduce them down again. And I like to get the whites and the blacks balanced first before I do that. Let me see. Really liking that. Really liking that so far. Yeah. Okay, that's it running with that one. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm not going to touch the contrast. I think the contrast is fine. Just let me try to bring it up slightly just to see. I don't think I need it. I don't like it because they say it's making it too um, Walt Disney. Let's put it that way with the colours, yeah. So I'm going to bring the contrast back again. Now, Exposure, I think it's okay. I'll have a look and see. Yeah. Now, the first thing I'm looking at here, I can clearly see how dark it is up here um, and far, how bright it is down, down in the bottom, especially down the two corners there. Oh, wrong one. So what I could do is, see, along here, you've got all these different uh, options. This is a graduated filter here, the grad filter. So I grab it here, bring that up. And basically what that's doing is going to be selecting just this area and it's very faint, very feathered over here. But this is the main area I want to darken because I want I want the viewer to sit and look at it and not be distracted by anything other than her and also by the book. So I'm going to be bringing that down. I'm going to drop the exposure. And have we look at that online? Oh, online. In full frame, I should have said. Okay, I'm liking that. And because that said is the exact same, well, it's not the exact same, but the lighting is going to be the exact same. I duplicate that, drag that across to there, rotate that around like that. That'll do the job. There's brightness up here, so I want to add uh, a filter in here, darken that down slightly to there. I say I'm not touching her face at all. I'm just really trying to get the, the viewer to come out, possibly go a wee bit darker again there. Let me just see. This is a fantastic thing about the digital and about Lightroom. You don't have to, you're in charge of it. You can just say, hmm, wee bit dark. You couldn't have done this with colour when in the dark room, colour dark room. That's fantastic. Now, if you look up here at the very top, I do think it's a wee bit dark up there. So, although it's dark, and I'm going to lighten it. I don't want to distract, but in the same breath, let me just see what's on. Yeah, bring the shadows in. And lighten just a wee bit. 
not going to darken it down. Um, I do think that there's possibly, yeah, that's better there. Done. So, okay, so that's the tweaking done so far. What I'm going to do is I bring that on down. You've got the clarity. Um, basically, that's sharpening the edges. In other words, it's sharpening the lines, making them more defined. Um, if you went down that way there, it's creating it. It's almost like the old romantic um, soft focus. But you don't want that. And if you're going on up to there, it's the opposite. Look at that. It's very witchy. So you want to get a balance there. I always go around about the 10 mark. 7 to 10 mark. Ooh. Okay. I don't touch the vibrance. Don't touch the saturation. I don't touch the tone curve. Um, I go on into the sharpening. I bring the sharpening, all my sharpening are always done around about the 50s. And I also then bring the noise reduction. Noise reduction really is, it's like taking away the noise of the, 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 the grain equivalent to on the film. Um, you don't want to go too mad with that. I always keep around about the 13. Now, a lot of people f become fanatical. Let me see if I get this here. You know, oh, you have to get, you know, get, the, get, get the eyelash pin sharp. And what they do, and they go ahead and they sharpen even more and sharpen even more. Guys, listen, let, let's get something clear. No one, and I mean no one, will zoom in on a person's eyelash from this distance. It's not done. I know a lot of people seem to become fanatical about how sharp the eyelash is on, the, on the things like that. Nobody does it. Nobody does it because if it's a photograph from this distance, you're happy enough with getting the rest sharp. So don't be worrying it too much. So don't be going mad with the sharp and an aspect of it. I like around about the 55 mark. I then turn around and get the, the vignette in here. I always do my vignettes in the 20s. Let's have a look at that. And that's it. That's it done. I wouldn't touch it now. Uh, the next thing I'll be doing here, I'll be exporting it. So you right click, export, Export. I'm going to export. That's the photographs tweak. Now remember, the original hasn't been touched. This is just a copy of it. Uh, what I'm going to be doing now. Let's see where it's going. Uh, user showing desktop workflow. Okay, I like that folder. You can put in any folder you want. Uh, custom name. Uh, goth girl. With book. Okay. Goth girl with book. Resize to fit. Okay, quality. Quality, I want to keep it up to 100%. You can do it that way. Keep it up to 100% because you want the best quality. If for toxic, you want to be sending it on, as an attachment, maybe for an, an email or put it on your website or put it up in the Facebook, etc. You could limit the file size to say 150 or 250, whatever you decide. Do you know what I mean? So therefore, you're not sending something too large of a file. But on this occasion, I want 100% uh, quality. Uh, to keep it there, long edge. I want it because it's a portrait. I want the longest edge of it to be 720 because it's going to be on a 1280 by 720 uh, video. So therefore I want the height of it to be 720, which is a long edge. If it was a landscape photograph, I would change the short edge till 720, okay? But because this is um, a portrait, I'm keeping it up the long edge. Resolution is 30. I don't want to enlarge. I want to keep it exactly as it is. Um, I'm leaving all metadata. Watermark, I got out a watermark there, which will be sitting turn around and going there. Uh, you know, rambles my camera.com at the bottom of the photograph if I want it. I don't want to do it, it's just going to be a photograph. I leave it like that. Export. And that's it done, guys. And as I say, I tell you, it's so easy. And, you know, I, I do this with all my photographs and I try not to uh, try not to make it look too touched up at the end of the day. That's the best thing about shooting raw, unlike the JPEG, when you're shooting raw, it retains all that information, all that digital information from what you're capturing and keeping it in one spot. When you shoot in JPEG, it takes a photograph, but it automatically compresses it and then edits it sort of in your camera, which is what you don't want. And this is where you're getting the quality you're getting them. Guys, listen, there you go. Quick video. Hope you found it informative. If you haven't already done so, please do subscribe. You can check me out on Twitter and on Facebook. Also, ramblesmycamera.com and on Flickr. All the links are down below. Thanks again for all your comments and all your support, guys. I really appreciate it. And I say watch out for the black and white uh, photograph editing coming up shortly. Guys, listen, send you love from Ireland. And thanks again for watching.